if you're looking at just one stat that's very important is you have to be not necessarily a dominantly power driver. It's just that anybody that's maybe outside the top, I'd say 120 of driving. If you're on the low end of the average, I think yeah. if you're borderline, you're okay. But if once you start getting to like that, that 120 and, and further up, and that includes players like Colin Morikawa and such, um, they don't win here. Well, it's <laughs> it's funny you say that because I actually have this stat. Six of the last seven winners at Quail Hollow have ranked top 15 in driving distance for that season. Wow, it's been even oh, for that season. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to throw out someone that's not top 15, sure. but if you're, you know, if you're 50th in this field, even 40th in this field of 70 guys in driving distance, you know, it's, I'm, I'm probably going to be, be crossing you off my list. I, I, I definitely want long hitters this week. Yeah. Let's take a look at the stats, though. Uh, let's take a look at your stats. Besides, of course, you've got the top 10 in course history. Uh, uh, and I'm going to get into that in just a second. But top 10 on difficult score, scoring courses over 7,400 yards. So there you go. Difficult courses, you know, long long yardage and so forth. So there you see the top 10. And then I'm also going to throw in a top 10 on par fours. As you can see, between 450 and 500. That's just for 2024. Uh, so these are all your stats, Jared. And I'm going to ask you... I was surprised. I mean, that must be like by like a point zero zero that Justin Thomas is, is the top guy. I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought Rory's got to be the top guy or even Ricky Fowler, who's right there. But wow, how is just I'm surprised Justin Thomas is number one. So I used the last five tournaments at Quail Hollow so that the, the fifth one in there is the PGA that Thomas won. So it's you know it's that PGA Championship and then the last four Wells Fargo's they got played. it. So you're including so what, the PGA Championship. Yeah. So got that's it. what bumps uh, JT up to the top. Um, okay. Then yeah, the um, you know difficult scoring courses. That's kind of just another way to look at course fit here, right? And just this is the type of course we want to look at: long courses, tough scoring courses. Since 2022, 20, gives us a bigger sample. A lot of big names up there. No, no major surprises to me, I guess. Besides Russell Henley pops up at six. Um, and then these long par fours, so par fours between 450 and 500. Um, there are six holes on this course that fit in that in that exact bucket, and then three more that are within six yards in either direction. So basically, half the holes on this course are par fours between 450 and 500. So okay. that's super important this week. Um, again, a lot of familiar names. I think Akshay surprisingly comes in fourth on this list. And then to me, I was surprised to see guys like Cantley and Spieth at five and nine here. High, you know, good players that aren't having good seasons, but have still done well on these long par four. So that was interesting to me. Yeah, Cantley's actually one of those players that's right about the cutoff line of average as far as the driver. And that's, uh, of course, we're talking about everybody on tour. So, yeah, that's a uh, matter of fact. If I was just looking at that one, the one that would stick out to me is Cantley. If I was, because I was, out of all the players that his odds are low, I don't like. He's not the most powerful driver. I don't like not having a great year. I don't like, but so those are the things bringing me down, but I'm, I was still like, you know what, you know, I like the fact that, you know, he had the improvement from first time around to second. He's trending in the right direction. Third at RBC the last time out, you know, and I still have him available in my one and dones. So mm -hmm. it was good that you had that stat that that made it a little bit that makes it a little bit easier for me to go yep. oh, okay so if I want to take Cantley this week I've got that on my side. Yeah, and the RBC uh, performance from him was nice. It was a lot of iron play, which had been an issue previously. Cantley's his other good finish this season came at, at Genesis, um, which I think is a pretty good comp course for Quail Hollow. Okay, by the way, I'm going to uh, pop up our picks. So there are picks. Jared has three. I have five. All right, McElroy. Um, look, this is – if you have McElroy in one and done, I, I think he's definitely somebody that you have to keep an eye on this week. No question yep. about it. He's, this is a very good golf course for him. He's made 10 of 11 cuts. He's a three-time champ. And it's kind of spread out really well. 2010, 2015, 2021, maybe you wait another year or two, but it's still in that kind of zone where, hey, you know, it's like every five years or so, he kind of wins this event. 
And now the only thing that I don't like is, is he has one top five this year on the PGA Tour. And he's trending in the wrong direction. Now, I'm willing to forgive the RBC because we know he didn't like the place. He didn't want to be there. So the 33rd is almost like, you know, he was just probably walking around the golf course. Didn't care. Um, but still, he is trending in the wrong direction. But those are some of the negatives. And the other one, obviously, is he's 6-1. to Yeah, Rory, definitely not a bet for me at 6-1. to Definitely, I still have him in one and done. I actually have all three of these uh, top guys on the odds board left in one and done so i'm definitely picking between those three um i i like all three of them this week on this golf course but yeah i mean this is just a tailor-made golf course for rory right like long got to be a good driver um and he's obviously had the success here so that I, i'm with you um he's he, he's the best one and done play this week i'm looking at our at our one and done too he's only available you know for 56 percent of teams so basically half the teams have already used rory so i don't think he'll be super 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 popular because of that Shoffle, second last year. The good thing is he's been better in all three of his events, so he's improved each time out, including, matter of fact, he was five over in his first two appearances combined and went 15 under last year. So that was a big jump. Um, I don't like the fact that he's trending in the wrong direction. It's a, it's incremental, uh, but it's still all top 20s, and that's just the kind of season Xander's had. Um, mm-hmm. The only negative again, getting 9-1, to one, so... I understand where you're coming from. Coming off second last year here, he doesn't have to worry about Scotty Scheffler. Hmm. Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, I see what you're saying. I just don't like the fact he's trending in the wrong direction, even as small as it is. But I understand. Yeah, I expect him to play well. I think expect him to top 10. Um, he's first in my model this week. He does everything you'd want to see a guy do for this golf course. Betting wise, he should not be ninety one. I, you know, we'll get into Wyndham here. I think Wyndham and Xander should be flipped on this odds board. I think you can make Wyndham Clark nine to one, and that, that that would make sense to me. All right. Next up is uh, Clark, and Clark is your top pick. So why not? Right? Uh, he's sixteen yep. to one. And to see, this is also if, you t- if we're talking about some of these players we just mentioned that have gotten better each time here. Well, Clark's a perfect example. Missed the cut seven over par, forty third last year, uh, two years ago two over par. Last year nineteen under par in his win. He's coming off a third at the RBC. He's had some time off, so yeah. Uh, can Wyndham Clark win back to back here? Why not? Yeah, one one here, one U.S. Open, another you know long tough golf course. Um, has what come second to Scotty Scheffler twice already this season at the <laughs> at the players in API. So you know take Scheffler out of there, and you know Wyndham might have three wins this year. Um, so yeah, again, I, I sixteen to one is is a a low number for me. I usually you know don't dip up below twenty too often, but I, again, I think I think Clark should be nine or or 10 to one here. So I think 16 to one is actually value. I agree hundred percent. It's almost kind of, you know, but that's been the deal, hasn't it? I mean, when we think he should be 15 to one, he's 30 to one. And when we yeah, think he should be right. 10 to one, he's 16 to one. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, all right, look, um, he, and 80, now 80% have him in one and done in our league. Yeah. I got to think there gonna be a lot of people taking him this week. Don't you think? He'd be my pick for most owned, which is surprising to say because of Rory's history here. But um, just the fact that so many people still have Wyndham, um, yeah, he's he's definitely going to be popular. Okay, now you have Cantlay, eighteen to one, and then we have three players at twenty-two to one: Homa, JT, and Morikawa. Now we just talked about Cantlay. Uh, Homa as a two-time winner of the event. Actually, if you look at it in his four appearances, he's been hit or miss here. 76th yeah. and a missed cut, first and eighth. So, And he's been really inconsistent this year. Uh, with only two top tens. His, his one top five was the Masters, which is like, where did that come from at Augusta? He had never played that well at Augusta before. So he's been really hard to handicap this 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 year. And that's why I just I don't think this would be a good week to take him because of that because this is one of those obvious weeks and I'm just I'd rather take Max maybe in a week where nobody's expecting him to win that's kind of been his mo yeah. this year. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, I obviously love the course history here. 
love the course fit. We always say we want home on, you know, longer, tough golf courses. That The form, though, just isn't where I want it to be. Like, he has the third at the Masters, but 55th at RBC, and then 25th at Valero, and 64th at the players, you know, kind of sandwiching that Masters outing. And, you know, the ball striking numbers still haven't been, like, typical Max Homa. So, um, not quite there with him. If uh, Actually, I already, I already, I was going to say, if he plays well this week, I will like him next week of the PGA, but I already have a, a Max Homa bet for next week that I placed about a month ago. So ho- hoping to see him uh, play well this week to carry some form into next week. All right. Now, Justin Thomas, uh, he's now down to 22 to one. I really like Justin this week and why not? Um, not only uh, does he fit your, your stat there of best th- last five on this golf course, including mm-hmm. his PGA championship win, Um, and and he's been consistent here. He's missed one cut. Besides that, everything 26 or better. So very consistent here. And he's coming off at fifth at the RBC, which was very important because he wasn't playing all that well. So the fifth at RBC without that, I'm not feeling this good, but the lasting memory of Justin Thomas a few weeks ago was a solid showing again. Here's the other thing. I digged into this research. How about this? The week before a major, or specifically the PJ Championship, mm-hmm. okay, he was fifth at the Byron Nelson. The week before his 2022 PJ Tour, PJ Championship win, he was third in Canada. The week before he played the U.S. Open in 2022, he won the week before the PGA Championship in 2020. And he won the week before the PGA Championship in 2018. And what was that? A WGC event, basically Mm -hmm. a signature event. So, oh, he was fourth the week before the PGA Championship in 2015 at the Quicken Mm -hmm. Loans. So he just really gears up the week before the PGA Championship. And, of course, he's got two PGA Championship wins so throw all that together, and that's why uh, if I had him on one and done, I'd take him. But I just I've already used him, um, so I'm definitely taking him as one of my picks this week. Yeah, I think yeah, I've used him in one and done too. Um, yeah, I, I like the bet. Um, yeah, the RBC performance was nice. He he gained across the board off the tee approach around the green and putting. Really, the approach play has remained strong for JT all season. It's the driver and the putting that has sort of come and gone, and that's sort of what's you know. Uh, influenced his his finishes so if he can figure those things out the, the approach play has been good enough to win i know we we've been saying really since the start of the year we think jt is going to get at least one win this season I, I, st- I still believe that he's another guy that i think is live uh next week obviously so hopefully he uh if he doesn't win hopefully he at least plays well and, and builds some momentum morikawa now we just talked about it this is you wouldn't you would think that this is just not no matter how hot he is and he's hot and I just said it I have him I put him on my futures uh, a couple of weeks ago when he started getting hot on the PJ Championship because yeah. I I think I got him at twenty five to one which is nothing great but I said to myself yeah but I could still see him dropping from twenty five to one because this is how hot he is look the fact that he's played here once and missed a cut at four over par I think is a telling sign now it could be one of two things just could be like we talked about the rest of them. They just need to be here a second time and a third time, and then he'll get it. But he's not a powerfully, you know, strong driver, and I think that's going to work yeah. against him. And I think you would probably agree with that, for sure. And man, Morikawa is tricky too, even for next week because the, the iron play still hasn't been there for him, which is usually his bread and butter. Um, even when he came, now he did. I believe he gained strokes approach at the masters i don't i don't have that data on fantasy national there's no strokes gain data but even at um heritage last time last time out when he came ninth he still lost strokes on approach that's four four of his last five events now he's lost strokes on approach and this is a guy that has been you know one of the best iron players in the entire world for you know the previous couple of years so something's still up with the irons um definitely not betting him this week and if you know, if, if you are on him next week i would definitely like to you know see a better approach performance from him this week yeah and 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 by the way this is going to be a good uh telling tale because of the fact that if he plays well knowing it works against him here the course that's going to be a good sign if he doesn't then you're probably right then uh it's 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 probably not a good bet to think that he could put it all together and win the pga championship in one week yep okay 
Now we have Hovland, Fleetwood, Thigala, and Cam Young. He's my top pick this week, Sahith. Um, and look, last year, he, he only played here once, and he finished 56th, one over par. So I do believe you can you can go from one bad to one good. We've seen it happen before here. The difference is Sahith has more of a power game. He's not like a bomber or anything like that, but he does have more of uh, the power game than some of these other players that we just talked about. Uh, yeah. You know, I think he's in the top 50, top 60. So he's one of those guys. Um, but look, he's so confident right now. Coming off the runner-up at RBC, he's had some time off. Um, he's played big in big events this year, signature events, sixth at Bay Hill, ninth at Players, the second at RBC. He was fifth at Phoenix, as we remember, even though that wasn't a signature event this year. But, but bottom line is, is see, I don't know yet if he can win a major, but I think the next step is the signature event. Yeah, I think he can win a major. I mean, maybe not this year. I'm not, no, no, I'm, yeah, but not I'm, this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely buying stock in Sahith long term as i think we've talked about i do like him this week sahith and cam young were the last two guys off my list uh as as bets this week you know 20 25 on either was just a bit short for me i, I i'm still fine with it. i just liked the other guys a bit better than i ended up betting but um yeah sahith is so well, first of all he's 16th in this field in driving distance so i think distance is not an issue for him he's long enough and then he you know he's he's fifth in my model for the week um behind actually sorry he's fourth now that uh, Ludwig is out, it's, you know, Xander, Wyndham, Rory, one, two, three, and then Sahith is, is next for me. He He's a really good Bermuda putter, too. He's the fourth best Bermuda putter in this field, and these are uh, Bermuda green. So that's another mark in his favor. But I also have Fleetwood. Not Forget about Hovland. Anybody that thinks of taking Victor Hovland right now, you are just playing with fire because, yeah. look, he is he, he's taken ex- all this additional time off because his game is just crap. Um, he does have a third-place finish here in his first appearance, 43rd last year. But in his last five events, his best finish is 19th. He's coming off a mis- <clears throat> miscut at the Masters. And I just – I don't even – he shouldn't even be 25-1. to 1. Okay, he should be 40 to 1 this week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, that's what they put Wyndham Clark for crying out loud some, some of these weeks. Victor Hovland yeah. is not playing 25 to 1. No, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. 40 to 1 is a better representation of where he's at. I think he, he's still probably, people are probably still batting him at 25 to 1 because of the name, because of his history here. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked. I mean, listen, he, he's going to figure it out, but I think, I think we'll see some signs of him getting it figured out before he wins. He's not going to go from. And what has he gone? He's gone sixty second at the players and then miscut at the Masters. I, he's not going to go from that to winning Wells Fargo. I think it'll be you know more more gradual um, return to his prior form. As far as um, Fleetwood, I like the fact that he has trended really well here at this event. He's a miscut to a fourteenth to a fifth. So he's been better each time out, 11 under par last year here. He's coming off a kind of a disappointing 49th at the RBC because he was playing well heading into that one. So I'm willing to give him a little bit of a blip. He's had a few more weeks off. But, you know, I, I also I think that the, the reason why I have him on my picks, and we talked about this, uh, and I, f- I think this was, I forget when this was. Maybe it was might have been before the Masters. I think it was because he played well the week before the Masters is that Tommy Fleetwood is another player like Rory McIlroy, and we just mentioned it with Justin Thomas. Those are probably the three best players in this field that have shown good results the week before they play in a major. Mm-hmm. So, And I looked at them all, and you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of research, but when I look at them all, those are the guys that stand out, McIlroy, <laughs> Fleetwood, and JT. Zalatoris is 35-1. to 1. Uh, Fitzpatrick is 35 30. See, you've got Zalatoris and Fitzpatrick, mm-hmm. and you should at 35 to 1. What are they doing in this category? Sam Burns has done nothing. Tony Finau is just, I mean, he's not the player he used to be. Mm-hmm. Siwoo Kim, all he's doing is, he, yeah, he hasn't missed cuts and he's top 30, man, but it, he, yeah. doesn't, he didn't even contend last week, and he's 30 to 1. Uh, Matsuyama is 35 to 1. Ben On is 35 to 1. But let's just start here with these guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to be in this group, Zalatoris and Fitzpatrick, but definitely Zalatoris, as we talked about. 
the thing that sticks out for me more than anything is the fact that you're getting 35 to one on him. Right. I'm definitely not a Fitzpatrick guy. I don't bet him often. He, to me, is always a tough guy to predict. Like, I don't really see any, like, trends or patterns in his game. (laughs) I know. It's hard. I can kind of nail him down. Um, But, yeah, 35 to one on a tough golf course where I like Fitz. I mean, this is a U.S. Open winner. Um, He he just missed our our, uh, top ten on difficult courses list, but he's 11th. He's the 11th best player in this field on those tough golf courses. Um, so yeah, that, that number just stuck out to me. Like, I don't think he should be behind uh, yeah, most of these guys at, you know, 35 and 30 to one. And Zal, Zal Torres opened on DraftKings Monday morning at 55 to one. I woke what was up that? At 55 to one. 55? Is what I actually got him at. I woke up Monday morning, saw it, bet it immediately. Jeez. I mean, yeah, he's, you know, he had the, he had a serious back issue and he, withdrew last week i get the risk but again my thing is if he i hope that if he's not at 100 percent, he's going to withdraw today or tomorrow and then we just get our money back if he ends up teeing it up even at 35 to 1 um what uh zale torres was second on our list of best players on tough golf courses i say it all the time tougher the golf course the more i like zale torres so this is definitely a good spot for him yeah i think it is so and again i'm gonna i, I feel 90 percent sure that he's playing so, okay. Um, and then again, Burns just isn't doing anything. Uh, and and see, see what Kim, look, if he's 40 to one, actually I was considering it, but mm-hmm. I, deal, did, I, I did not take him though. And it, again, it was close, but the, 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 the uh, only reason, the main reason I, I went away from him is just not a power hitter. He's not, a, it, it, that's not his game. And I looked at his two visits here 43rd is his best so that's a red flag that's why i took him out but i would never consider him at 30 to 1 um keep this in mind he was second the week before the pga championship last year um and he does play a lot i noticed he plays a lot the week before a major not a lot of players do he's comfortable doing it but yeah 30 to 1 is just uh, too short yep agreed what do you need to see out of tony finau before you start getting interested in him you know, I, I briefly considered him this week. I like him on these longer golf courses. Um, he continues to hit it well, just doesn't ever putt well enough to win. Um, Bermuda is also easily his worst surface. Oh, is it? Okay. Guy, he, you know, he's a guy I want either on you know, the West Coast POA or as we get more, you know, Northeast with the bent grass is actually his, his best putting surface. He really struggles on, on Bermuda. So um, okay. that, that was for me to knock him off my list. And Ben On is now joining the big boys at 35 to 1, but he has a combined scoring total of 14 over par here and has only made the cut once in five appearances, including a withdraw. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't seen enough from him in crunch time on Sunday to think that he, he can win a signature event yet. Yeah, I think he's, and he's got to win something a bit easier before he can win something like this. But yeah, this I, yeah, I agreed. Uh, Jordan Spieth is 40 to 1. How about that? Uh, but he should be because of yep. the way he's playing. Uh, and by the way, he missed a cut here last year at seven over par. He's now missed four out of his last six cuts. And and we all, I mean, at least I thought this was going to be a much better year for him. He got off to a good start. And then I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, oh, oh, I mean, we keep hearing about that wrist issue. That, maybe you know, that's it. I guess, I guess the doctors have told him he can't make it worse by playing, but I definitely think it's it's been an issue. Um, now, this is surprising. Alex Noren has as what is he doing down here at forty to one? Uh, we know on the other uh, uh, events like last week, he was one of my top picks. Almost took him for one and done, and that was okay. You know he's playing well this year. I picked him up on my fantasy team as you know. But what's he doing? Especially because he's he's not a long hitter. He shouldn't even be here. Nope. No. The, the, the guy I like in this range is Akshay. Um, I, I think he opened at 50, and I was really looking at him at 50. Um, you know, he's a guy you know, has what won twice, including you know about about a month ago. I think he's a guy who is going to elevate his game and be a guy competing in signature events eventually. You know, I think, um, and he, he's just he's hitting it as well as anyone really. He's he's sixth in my model for the week, um, and and I, and I do think he's capable of winning these type of big events. All right, so we've been through uh, all three of your picks. So you have, again, Clark Fitzpatrick Zalatoris. 
We've seen three of my picks, the Gala, Thomas, and Fleetwood. The other two that I have, and I'm going to go with him this week, and that's Ricky at 55-1. to one. I like the fact that he's coming off that uh, top 20 at RBC, and maybe, because he's trending in the right direction, maybe he's got his game back, and we know this is a really good venue for him. And you're getting 55 to 1. So um, that's why I decided last year he was 14th at 8 under par here. So that's, and he's a, he's a uh, champ back in 2012. So I'm going to roll the dice with him this week. And I'm also, my top long shot's going to be Patrick Rogers. So Rogers is 100 to 1. He did uh, finish second here in his very first appearance. I think that was way back, maybe five, six years ago. His last appearance was fifth at the RBC. I, I, he withdrew one event. I haven't heard anything whether or not, you know, I haven't heard anything really injury wise that, he's, you know, it's, it's something's really wrong with him. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was a little bit of a needed a break for some reason, but it's 100 to 1. So I think he's worth the gamble. Yeah, we'll say with Ricky, uh, he, he seemed to figure out the irons lately. The iron play has been good. The driver's still been an issue, but at least he's got the irons figured out. And uh, who else do you like? Well, I looked at Lowry down here, just another guy I like on tough golf courses. Um, but I, I really, again, these signature events on courses like this, I, I try not to uh, go too much down the odds we're here. I think one of the you know top guys is going to win. Yeah, the other guys I was looking at, Harris English, uh, Chris Kirk, I would have went with McCarthy, but I don't like the uh, – the. He, this is not suited for his game. Uh, mm-hmm. Post on, same thing. I like the way he's trending, but it's not suited for his game. Lucas Glover, exact same thing, same reason, even though he's won here before back in 2011, but that was a long time ago. And maybe if you want a deep long shot, Webb Simpson. Um, this is yes. an event. If you had to pick any event to win, this would be it. So um, that's why uh, – you know, if he can get off to a good start, maybe he could uh, do something crazy, uh, okay. but unlikely. Okay, so next week we got the PGA Championship. I think we're looking good with Jan. So as long as everything still holds up, we'll have Jan Stevenson to talk next week, probably Monday if we can fit it in, and we'll get a day in earlier. If not, definitely Tuesday. So check back with us again next week for our preview of the PGA Championship uh, right here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. So Jared, appreciate it as always. We'll see you next week. Yep, sounds good, Greg. Good luck.